Today we're going to be talking about don't counter trend the peak formation. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Friday, we've had some absolutely monster moves this week on the British pound crosses. Today we're going to be talking about understanding the peak formations and don't counter trend the peak formations. Very important. Each session as the day evolves can give us valuable information about potentially the high of the day, the low of the day, and where the markets may be getting prepared to move as we head into the next session. Really important to understand the concept about don't counter trend the peak formation. So often we talk about, traders have asked, can I trade uh, in the gap times? Can I trade uh, you know, in Asia? All of that's entirely at your discretion. I'm looking for one or two types of trade setups. I have had another great question. Can you, can you show us what your trade setups are? I'm telling you the same thing every single day. We're gonna be talking about the 12 candle window. Really important, simple concept to grasp is that as the day evolves, when Asia's trading, they may have already put a high of the day in place or a low of the day in place. And that may remain for the entire day. Or we may get one put in place that as we head into London gives us valuable information as to where we may be headed when we are looking for the market to break out and potentially be doing either a stop hunt or a breakout pullback continuation if it's a trend trade. So if Asia, for example, gives us in this first hour a one, two, three to the high, and in that second hour, gives us a, a breakout pullback engulfment for just as an example and the market as we trade throughout the rest of the session puts a low in place but it ends up taking out that low in that second three hour window. That peak formation is really important because now we may know that we have a high of the day in place especially if our market has been making new lows, this was a stop hunt potentially back into the trend and it may have been somewhere in the area of 25 to 50 pips from the previous low of the day. So the market has made a new low, pulled back in Asia, worked the high in the opening of that 12 candle window and then we've engulfed it and it's dropped down and worked back into the peak before dropping down in that second three hour window as we head into London or the Europe London 12 candle window. So as London comes on board, traders are not sure where to go and on top of that we've probably got numbers somewhere in here. Maybe a 50 or a double zero, 25, doesn't matter. The market though if we've put a high in place and the market has confirmed that with its price action, what would we be looking for in that first hour if I'm going to be looking for something to continue that move down? Often we'll see some kind of, you know, either an engulfment in that first hour, uh, a bull candle, then a bear candle, and then a pin hammer, but there will always be a pin in the direction that we want to be trading. So if we're going short, we will see a pin at some point. The engulfment can come first and then maybe a pin, but there will be a pin in the direction of where that market's headed. But remember the number one thing. We want to be working at the high and the low of the day. We're going to look at some examples because when you start to understand that each session, by the time that 24 hour market is done, 90% of the time in that 12 candle window, one of those sessions will be the high and one will be the low of the entire day. Sometimes New York might open up inside. Other times New York might be working the low. It might be a trend move. The market might be working back into the previous session for a continuation. But we'll have a peak formation either in London or Asia to continue that move. 
So for example, London might go down 50 pips and put a bottom, a low of the day in place. We head into the US session, we could be inside of that London and Asia window. We talked about the three types of M&W patterns. We're going to look at a couple of textbook perfect W formations that occurred, type 3 W's, yesterday on the Pound Aussie, uh, Pound New Zealand. But we'll also look at some other examples throughout the week of identifying peak formations that are already in place when we head into the next session. The 12 candle window will then either continue with the trend or be working one of the extremes to put a low of the day in place or a high of the day in place to lock it in and shift the market back for 50 pips. We'll look at some examples, but remember each session as the day evolves is going to potentially lock one of those areas in. The odd time we might be getting three peaks where the market works the high, works the high, works the high and sells off and vice versa for the low of the day and over the New York, Asia, London, New York sessions. But typically that will be inside of the high or the low of the week or at the very top of the high or low of the week or bottom. So when we get those formations and the market, Asia sets a high and a low and the market is trading off of those, you can expect that at some point the peak formation will be at the high of the day, at the high of the entire day or the low of the entire day for the move back in New York. But as the day evolves, if we're, if we're expanding outside of the range, 25 to 50 pips, and they put a peak formation in, very important not to counter trend that. If you counter trend a peak formation, as it's moving, especially as we head into the next 12 candle window, those are the trades that traders are trying to counter trend and the move is already underway and it's going to continue to, to keep shifting. You'll get stopped out, you'll hit it again, you'll get stopped out again. And that's one of the most important things to understand is that if the low of the day is locked in, don't counter trend against the low of the day. If the high of the day is locked in, don't counter trend against the high of the day. They may come back there later in a trade in New York or in London, but on the way to before that other opposite peak, peak extreme is in place, do not counter trend it. And remember, when they go outside of the Asian range, typically that move of 25 to 50 pips will be into an existing profitable trade, whether it's with the trend or counter trend. So again, we'll look at some examples, some great feedback for, from some traders. We've had some tremendous movement this week. We've had huge days on the British pound crosses and some of the other pairs, the Euro crosses have given some great trade setups as well. I think we're gonna continue to see some fantastic volatility on these pairs. Keep it simple. I'm gonna go over some of the examples on the charts of this week, we're going to go through each pair and just look at the 12 candle window and ask ourselves, are we at the high or the low of the day? Is there, an, is there an example of where inside this 12 candle window they've given me a peak formation high or a low? So we're going to talk about that again just real briefly. This first hour, we could be going higher in that first hour coming out of Asia. But typically, we will see the high or the low locked in in that first two candles of the equities hour if they're gonna put a high or a low in place once it's gone out of that range. Very important. Engulfments on a first leg, first leg, if you're down low or up high, an engulfment by itself is not enough for me to take that trade. I will wanna see a unless the, the engulfments themselves have pins on the top or the bottom, depending if you're going long or short. Very important for me to see the pins on the tops or bottoms of those candles. That's evidence to me that they've gone up and stop hunted up high, done it a second time. I will take an engulfment if it's the second candle of an hour or if we already have a pin in place prior to the engulfment if that makes sense. So if we have a W, we might get an engulfment on that right side, but I want to see, see a pin has happened on the left side. Same thing for the double top formation, the M pattern. I will take an engulfment, but not on the first leg unless there's a pin that accompanies it on the second leg. I'll always be looking for the second leg 
or the pin on the first leg up high on a third push or down low on a third push. We saw a great example on the pound, uh, pound Australian on Wednesday of a 33 pin hammer reversal, then a right shoulder engulfment for the W at the equities open. We'll look at that as well. That, that a uh, pair moved over 100 pips off the low of the day. So keep it simple, but remember, don't counter trend the existing peak formations. If the market has put a high in place and we're heading into London, look for the pin hammer to continue that move down to perform the stop hunt. And vice versa, once they've locked in, potentially locked in the low of the day, as we head into the next equity session, do not counter trend that peak formation. The market will shift quickly and move away and if you're holding on to a losing position, it will do significant damage to your account. Again, thank you for all the great feedback traders. Keep it simple. End the week on a strong note. Work from the high and the low of the day. Stick to the 12 candle window or thereabouts, plus or minus. But keep it simple. Have a great trading session and may the markets go with you. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're discussing not counter trending the peak formation and understanding, uh, looking at Asia, looking at London, knowing if we potentially have a high or low of the day locked in place. And when we head into the 12 candle window, where we're at in relation to that peak formation. So we talked about the initial balance Friday, Monday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, that sort of thing. Friday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, often in a large percentage of the cases will be the higher, the low of the week. And when we head into our 12 candle window, we can look at the different types of peak formations, the way that Asia is traded to get us information to determine if indeed we may have a high locked in place already or a low, or if that is just in a trading range that we may come back to later to trade through uh, you know if London or New York puts a, an opposite peak formation in place so each session by the end of the 24 hours we'll have one of those sessions will be the high one of those sessions will be the low and in the odd case uh, all three can be the high high of the day or the low of the day if they're working one side throughout the entire three sessions for the shift back at the end of the New York reversal. So when we look and we look at the British pound for this week, we'll go through each day. We talked about, you know, using Friday, Friday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, but just thinking in simple terms, in our three hour 12 candle window in Asia, the market drops down 25 to 50 pips before going sideways in consolidation. The market goes sideways in consolidation and it's working the low. It's working the low. We see the pin hammer in the middle of that second three hour window. And this candle, we'll just highlight that, is very important because <clears throat> when you start to see pins showing up on the bottom or the top of the day in or around our 12 candle window, they are very important because that could end up becoming a peak formation for the reversal. The market goes sideways in consolidation. We get a pin to the high. Traders are looking, thinking that's a stop on high for the continuation. But we've just dropped 25 pips and gone into consolidation. We redraw our highs and lows. The market pins to the high, but this is outside of our trading window. Then the market engulfs with a pin hammer above that peak formation low and breaks out pulls back. So as we head into our 12 candle window, our peak formation, we have a high of the day and a low of the day, but our peak formation low has just given us a low of the day. The market in the first candle continues with an open drive candle and gives a pin on the last candle of the first hour, a pin to the high, but we're, we're in a breakout from the low of the day. London, first candle of the London uh, equities open the second hour gives us a pin hammer pins to the downside in a breakout trade from the low of the day so what the hypothesis is here is that do we have the low of the day locked in place and if so at the equities open we have a pin hammer we have a pin on the bottom now 
which is a stop hunt back in against traders who have potentially got this right in the first hour. But we have a pin on the downside, a pin hammer after a move from the low of the day. The market breaks through to the high of the day, gives a pin on the last candle of the first, uh, second hour again. Our assumption is that the next hour then will also continue up and we get our engulfment. And I talked about engulfments and the second candle of an hour. If it's an engulfment, especially on a second leg or in the midst of a trend, I will hit that as well for a continuation. Timings in the hourly rotation are critical. An engulfment in the first two candles of an hour is essentially the same as a pin bar. If you understand that, if you combine these two candles, that is a pin to the downside. And that market continues to break through for consolidating and continuing with another engulfment in a runaway market. But most importantly, Asia did not trade sideways. It opened up and immediately came down. That's a stop hunt, a 25 to 50 pip stop hunt on the U.S. session profitable traders from Friday's session. You notice in the U.S. session 12 candle window, we talked about this day previously. Without even looking at the highs from the left from the previous Thursday, the, the market opens up in an uptrend. We're assuming we're going to get a high of the day at some point, but we're, you know, traders were in a strong market. The market goes one, two, three down. Engulfment with a pin to the downside. Okay. At the beginning of the second hour, the equities market opens. Moves up, it hits the redrawn high of the day. Okay, this is where traders get caught. They short the engulfment, which is not really an engulfment. This is two bull candles, so it's actually one bull candle. The market goes sideways and then engulfs long with a pin hammer. That's a W formation at the high of the day. Type 2 W formation at the high of the day for the continuation long. So we get our middle structure. First hour is a stop hunt against the trend. The market breaks out, pulls back, stop hunting traders who have got it right, putting heat on them on the engulfment pin hammer for engulfing and a second pin hammer for the right side of the W formation. This is a strong move. We haven't even talked about, we talked about um, geometrical ranges and measured moves. We know we're looking at a second full expansion minimum because we're sitting on top of the first full expansion. One push, two push continuation, right shoulder W. We head into the next day. And again, Asia gives us a peak formation high in the second three hour window but it also gives us a peak formation low we have a double bear candle engulfment off the low of the day we have a peak formation high but as we head back into the 12 candle window the market breaks through the high of the day so our assumption is that this is the low of the low of the day may potentially be locked in the market in our second hour goes one two Two pins on top, no engulfment, but we get a pin hammer on the London, the second candle of the London hour. Traders short this, it engulfs on the second candle down, drops down another candle, but then pulls back. Now this is really important because a move, if this was going to be the high of the day, this market should continue down through or to the low of the day. It pulls back and goes into consolidation. If you're in this trade, you would want to be at break even, taking money off the table or cutting the trade because now you understand that this trend is potentially still continuing. Because if this was the high of the day for a reversal, this market would come down. Now I'm not suggesting that this was a sell, but I'm saying for traders who did short this market, we look at this and we say the peak formation low may already be in place. This market comes down, works back up into the traders who have shorted it. One push, two pushes, three pushes into the high of the day and the pin on the second leg. The middle structure, market stop hunts down into traders who are long early in, inside of the high and the low. So we talk about staying to the high and the low. Traders who are in here get stopped out. You can see where they've jammed the volume in and then given the pin hammer on the last candle of the first hour in the US session for the sell, even though it's counter trend, similar to here, 25 to 50 pips into the trend, 
then the reversal, breakout engulfment for the continuation of the long trade with the trend. The with trend trade has no problems. The counter trend trade only goes 25 pips into the trend. So traders, you're in a strong move off the low of the week. It's making new highs. Traders are trying to short it. It's not. It's going 25 pips. Then coming back, they short it again. It's going 25 pips, and they're missing the move back with the trend. Market eventually gives us a peak formation to close out the day with a high bull candle and engulfs, pulls back inside and goes sideways. The next day, the market in the 12 candle window engulfs the high bull and then starts working back underneath of the high bull, making new lows, working back up. And you'll notice the round numbers. We're working back up into the numbers. Our 12 candle window gives us a pin hammer on the first candle. The market breaks down to new lows, pulls back on the London first candle of the London hour with a bull pin stop hunt high pin to the high. We have profitable, profitable traders in the U.S. session from the day before and the low of the day from the Asian session. Market breaks out fast and hard on our second leg in a down move underneath the peak formation candle as well as taking out the low of the, the day and then working back up into it for the 50 pip move down to the low of the day. Now, these pins are very important. We have a pin on the third candle of the second hour of the London hour. Now, typically, if the market is going to do something back up into the trend, it will happen in the second candle, first or second candle. London, If London was to open up down here, it would go back one, two into the trend. But the market has moved down and then pinned back on the last candle of the first hour. So we have two pins. We have a low of the day and we have the pin up top for the traders who are shorting this off the pin. So that's a box. We extend the stop hunt into the third hour. The market pulls back. No engulfment, but close. Pins the low one more time. Gives us our inside bear candle. We have our middle structure. And then the engulfment for our type 1W, 50 pips outside of the Asian range after the stop hunt off of numbers. Engulfment comes back inside the high-low box of the pins. Works back up. One, two, three, sideways. That's a continuation of the measured move now. One, two, three, four, five, six into the 12 candle window. And then back to the high of the London session for a 50 pip move back up. Type 1W, 50 pips below the Asian range. These pins are very important because it gives us structure for the market to come back. It's a box, it comes back inside, then goes back to the top of that box and breaks through, pin hammer heading into the next 12 candle window. So we had a peak formation high. The market dropped lower, worked back up into the Asian range, giving us a sell high setup for the 25 to 50 pip stop hunt outside of the Asian range, and then giving us a type 1W off the low of the day after our 12 candle window with the engulfment coming back inside of the box. So again, we can draw our big structure highs and lows. These will be points that at some point the market will trade back towards. We go into our Asian range. We have a, a normal day. The market trades off the high and the low before eventually giving us a peak formation low. Low of the day setup. The market works back up towards the high of the day. Just fix this. Also the high, the real high, which is our blue tracer. Drops back. And then one, two, three inside bar on our 12 candle window. We have a middle structure in place now. Sideways pin hammer at the London open to the top side. So they've come out, 
Work one push, two pushes, third push, pin hammer, pin to the high, middle structure for 25 consolidation and then a 50 pip move down. Stop hunting traders from the previous day's profitable trades from the London reversal. So again, knowing where profitable trades are, 25 to 50 pips on either side. But more importantly, we had a low of the day. Don't counter trend the peak formation until we have possibly the next session giving us a peak formation in the other direction. We have consolidation after uh, taking out the previous day's high. A, a bullpin hammer, sorry, a bear pin hammer at the end of the first hour, and then a bullpin hammer beside it. Two pins to the top. The London candle immediately breaks to the low, consolidates, hits it again. That's one push. Two pushes. We're working the low of the day. Traders go long on this second pin off the bottom. One push, two pushes, and we still haven't taken out the swing high. This is a, roar, a red flag to be, especially when it gets to the numbers, to be either at break even, taking money off the table, or getting out because this market now potentially is going to do a retest of the low and a measured move through the low of the day. So one push, two push, traders go along. One, two, three, still not taken out the high. Inside bar, engulfment reversal. Heading into the U.S. Session 12 candle window, we have a pin hammer. But we don't have a low of the day until this bull candle prints. So now we have a low of the day in place. The market hits it a second time at the equities hour, middle hour opening, pulls back, engulfment, bear pin hammer. So we've worked the low of the day, pulled off. We have our middle structure now for our W formation reversal. The market breaks back up inside of that box, retests, and then bull candle with a pin on the bottom for the move back through the high of the day. Today we're heading into the Asian session. We have a high of the day in place for a peak formation possibly. We have a low of the day engulfment. The market has come underneath and worked back up inside. We're inside of the Asian range depending on how they come out of this. As we head into our Europe London 12 candle window, the market may come off the low of the day for a move back in the long direction so they could stop out traders off the downside or re retest the low of the day for a move back up or we may work back up into the high of the day for a move back down. Currently though the low of the day we have a peak formation low we have a peak formation high depending on if they work the low we'll look for a buy low setup heading into the uh, London 12 candle window they may break out uh, to the upside uh, the low of the day may give us our W formation for a trade in the uh, equity, Europe equities open, breaking through the high of the day for the continuation of the long trade. We'll take a look at another pair now. So if we look at our pound New Zealand, you can look at any pair you want. Again, same sort of scenario. We have our 12 candle window in Asia. Market gives us a peak formation high. Takes out the initial peak but as we break lower taking out the blue tracer from the previous Friday the market starts to work the low redraw our highs and lows but then we get a pin hammer on the bottom of that low of the day it goes into consolidation before breaking out in that first candle of our London hour we have a potentially now our W formation 25 pips below the Asian opening range Bull candle breakout in the first candle of the 12 candle window. So we have our high of the day. We have our low of the day possibly locked in place. We get an engulfment. Pin hammer and an engulfment at the end of the first hour. This market is screaming longs all the way. We've got a, a low of the day locked in place. The market immediately hits to the high. Goes into consolidation. And then we get another engulfment on top of the Asian range and a bull candle with a pin on the bottom breaks out another pin breaks out continues to move takes out our swing high from Asia 
on Friday. Continues to move higher into the U.S. session. First hour continues to move higher engulfment before we get our big engulfment reversal. Now, again, traders, all you have when you get this is you now have a high of the day possibly in place. That by itself is only a high in a screaming uptrend. It is not a sell signal. We're in our end of the second hour. So we're two hours into the 12 candle window. We're in a screaming uptrend. We get a, we get a high of the day, uh, in, a swing high in place, which is now our new high of the day. The market comes down, gives us our little bull candle doji at the end of our 12 candle window before breaking back above, consolidating engulfment and hitting the high again. This is not a trade. This is counter trending a strong trend. But we do have a high of the day that's in place as we head into our next day. We also have a high and a low from our U.S. session. The market goes into consolidation, works the low in three pushes, one push, two push, three pushes, before engulfing and reversing off of our smaller rectangle as we head into our 12 candle Asian window breaking out and working right back to the high of the previous day. One, two, three, consolidating at the high of the day before continuing that move higher in the second three-hour window. So we have one push, two pushes, and then a third push in our 12-candle Europe-London window. The market goes sideways, and then we get a one-two pins on top engulfment reversal at the second candle of the London equities opening time. I said that I won't short an engulfment by itself against the trend unless it is on a third level and unless we have an engulfment with pin hammer. In this case, we have both, and it's the second candle of the equities opening hour, which, again, by definition, those two candles together are one big pin hammer to the high. We have our middle structure from the equities, sorry, from the first hour of the uh, US, sorry, the Europe London window. We have a middle structure on the higher leg. The market immediately responds exactly how it's supposed to. So as opposed to getting one, two, three, 25 pip move and pulling back, this market breaks right through with all this trap volume caught up high that's exactly what it's supposed to do in order for us to, to for it to indicate to us that this is a strong move high of the week trade setup the market pulls back after hitting stops goes into consolidation and then continuing the move and now we have a market that's making new lows the market takes out the low of the day the low of the US session pulls back they hit it again. No pins as we head into the U.S. session 12 candle window. We had a pin. The market took that out. We go into our U.S. session 12 candle window. The market one, two, sideways, three down. We get a pin. Pin on the bottom. In that second hour, second candle of the second hour, the market immediately pulls back and gives a pin hammer engulfment breakout back against the trend. This move is a 50 pip move against the trend. I don't recommend this trade to people until they have experience executing that move, but the most important part is the second hour. It's the equities open. It was a stop hunt from the previous day's London session, and they put a pin on the bottom. Although this candle is not a full engulfment, this is an engulfment after the one, two, three. And we have our pin on the bottom. The market immediately moves back aggressively and fast for a 25 to 50 pip stop hunt, getting traders who shorted the leg on the last leg down to the lows. The market pulls back and goes into consolidation, gives us a peak formation high before dropping down and taking out the low of the day. Pulls back inside and we get a one, two, three against the strong move down 
and engulfment, which follows through in Asia. And then we get a reversal that gets traders chasing this as the low of the day before we get our pin hammer and the continuation through the low of the day. We now have a market that is making new lows and potentially have a peak formation high of the day in place, possibly for the day, but definitely as we head into our London session. The market continues to fall as we head into our Europe London 12 candle window. The only option for traders here is a sell signal. There is no evidence of a low of the day being in place. We get a doji with pins, a little bull candle, and then our engulfment of the bull candle and the third candle of the Europe London open for a one, two, three pin hammer to the low for 50 pip move down. The market, again, just in terms of timings, this is very important. This is the second candle. So the market on a second candle gives us a pin hammer. We can expect the stop hunt against the trend. We get a one, two, three inside bar. There's our pin now for our upper box and our pin for our lower box structure, which again will be important because that's our London hour. Our London hour has given us a high and a low. The market trades back down for a 50 pip move, hits the low, pulls back, hits the low again, pulls back, hits the low one more time as we head into our U.S. Session 12 candle window. We get a bullpen hammer. Now pin, pins are facing on the bottom. First candle has a bullpen hammer after three pushes into the low. The third push, the bullpen hammer closes back inside of our redrawn box. Breakout pullback and then another bullpen hammer at the end of that first hour. So now we have another middle structure. The market breaks out on the first candle of that second hour equities open to give us our type 2 W formation at the low of the day. The market does what it's supposed to do and quickly keeps moving in the same direction as our trade entry back towards the high of that swing high from London, consolidates before engulfing and continuing that move, which is a sign of a strong move. So traders may have held on for more. Once they had the engulfment, they know they could trail this for an extra 25 or more pips. We head into the next day. Just so traders know, not everybody's data is going to look like this in the rollover. I will often ignore these first few candles when they uh, splay out like this. I'll try to stick with the normal price action for my highs and lows. Redraw our highs and lows for our structure. The market works the high in the rollover time and the gap time before engulfing for a type 2M formation for dropping down in the equities open in that 12 candle Asian window. Just redraw this. So the point I'm trying to make is that when you have a peak formation in place from the U.S. session, once we had this peak formation low, working the low, working the low, working the low, 33 trade engulfment, W formation, you do not want to counter trend any of these moves. The market's got a peak formation high in place. This, mar this move off the low of the day gives us a low of the day, but this inside bar is our trade back to the low of the day. The market could have stopped at the low of the day and given us a W formation, but London gave us an extended range. Pulled back, stop hunted against the trend. Okay, Broke down, now we have our peak formation high still in place. And it takes out the peak formation low. This is a downtrend. Each peak formation should continue. If that peak formation fails or stalls as it did right at the equities open, and we get a peak formation going in the other direction, at the 12 candle window, at the low of the day, we do not want to counter trend this move. The next day, we potentially have a peak formation in place. The market goes back into that peak formation and then confirms it. Even though these two bull candles are essentially one, the market breaks through the low of the day, pulls back, takes out the bull candles again. We are in a market that potentially right now has a peak formation high locked in for the day. We will only want to be selling with this move until the market gives us evidence of a peak formation low. 
We head into our 12 candle window. We have a bull candle engulfment on the first candle of the Europe London session. Go sideways. We get another pin hammer. That market continues down to the London open. Makes a pin on the low. Inside bar and then a pin to the high. That's our structure for our high and our low box. The market extends outside of our London box, performing a 25 to 50 pip stop hunt on profitable traders from the previous U.S. session. Gives a pin hammer in the third hour and then a bull candle that closes just on the bottom of our London structure. The next candle confirms. Traders think they're chasing the move, but we're back inside the low of the box. So if you weren't in down low, traders, some traders got in when it came back inside. Other traders got in when it closed as a bull candle at the bottom part of the box. But again, it, it's a one bar stop because this market should go straight away to the upside of that range. It breaks through before giving us an engulfment. Inside of the high of the day and the low of the day, our peak formation low is valid. It's taken out the London high. Comes back down. Traders are looking to short this or they have shorted it, thinking it's going back down to the low of the day. Market pulls back inside. Hits the low one more time before we get an inside bar. The 12 candle window opens with an engulfment back towards the high the, re the most recent high of the day, swing high, but we have our W formation in place now with the engulfment for the continuation from our peak formation low. Do not counter trend the peak formation. Low of the day, high of the day, the market moves back through the high of the day to continue for a measured move, trapping and stopping out traders from Wednesday's Asian high. As we head into our Asian window now, we can see the market went into consolidation. Trap traders shorting this market before reversing. We may have a low of the day in place now as we head into our second three hour window. This market may pull back and give us a W formation for a continuation long or it may work back up, but we do have Room for this market to continue to trend in the long direction, so I would expect a stop hunt back down, possibly a W formation back towards the high of the week. This big middle structure is a massive multi-session W formation. We are at lows, near the lows of the year. Uh, this market, if it was to continue to trend, possibly could continue to move through the high of the week, um, and there is range for that for this to do that. So do not counter trend the peak formation. As of now, this market has a peak formation low in place, traders. And uh, you know, regardless of what the market throws at us heading into London, London could give us a sell high setup against the trend with three pushes down before a continuation back through the high of the day for a measured move. But again, we'll respond as the market uh, gives us the information that we can make decisions in live time in that 12 candle window. Hopefully you got value from today's video traders. Do not counter trend the peak formation highs and lows of the day. Have a great trading session and may the market. Hi go traders, with you. it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.